everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today, a really quick project for you. This is going to be a start to finish build. Um, in my last video, I did the uh, Gifts for Woodworkers Holiday Edition, and one of the last tools I talked about were this pair of uh, micro jig um, mag jigs. What these are is magnetic switched uh, little uh, devices. What I mean is right now, they're not magnetic. You throw the switch, they stick very well to the table. You to throw the switch to get them off. What I want to build is a very simple uh, fence table for this little, um, this is the uh, Central Machinery 5-speed drill press. I want to say they call it the 8-inch, but I'm not 100% sure. It's the cheapest one at Harbor Freight. This is the one that goes for about 50 bucks. Um, it's, it's a very underpowered uh, drill press, but it's good for a small woodworking shop. I wouldn't want to use this to do anything with metal, but uh, I think it's fine for drilling smaller holes in wood. And it has served me pretty well for the last year. And it needs a table. And all I need for this is a very simple piece of plywood. I got a scrap cut off that is just about the right size. That would go like this. And then a piece of wood like this to serve as a fence like that and what that's going to give me is about two and a half inches from the fence wall to the bit um, obviously because this is going to be magnetically set back here um, to the table the first dimensions we need to figure out is do we want this table to be this big um, and to figure that out, honestly, I am going to install the magnets on this full-size board. And if we need to make it smaller, we'll trim a little from each end with the magnets still installed. So that's the next step. Let's install the magnets into this board. Okay, guys, I got the piece of plywood here, and I've done a few little calculations. Let me show you what I did. First, I've kind of slid the table around to the side here so that I can work on it better. I don't know if you can see this, but I put a mark on the pillar of the table, which is dead center to the zero mark here on the table, which is the center of the table. Then I made a mark at nine inches. This is an 18 inch piece of plywood. So my center is at nine. So I put that up and ascertained my two ends of the metal table. Obviously, I want these metal uh, uh, magnets to go through right here in the corner so that they stick right there and actually make a good bond. So what we want to do is I've marked on the end, marked the center and I've marked the end of the table. Um, I have a little bit of leeway here. I want to come in three quarters of an inch. Let me set that on my little double square here. So I want to come in three quarters of an inch. And then I can square up my ends of the table. And as you can see, I now know that I would like to put my marks right here. So that there will be three quarters of an inch overhanging back here. And then we can drill out the little holes for the magnets right here. Okay, so I hope you can see that. I'll flip it over. What we have is the actual marks where I want to drill out for these to go right through the board. You can see that they're a perfect size for a piece of plywood. We have two holes that we're going to screw these things down to the table and once we get them embedded into these holes, we'll be able to secure this piece of plywood directly to the table with magnets and it won't move. Then we just take this piece, we'll trim it to size and put it here, right up to the magnets. And what we'll have is a fence that looks just like that, that we can turn the magnets, take it off, turn the magnets, put it back on. All right, let me cut the holes out. 
Hey everybody, welcome back. Okay, full disclosure, I gotta let you know when I make mistakes and I made a whopper here. Uh, as you can see, I have a slightly narrower board now. This board used to be out here about this wide. The first attempt I made at cutting these holes, I did with a Forster bit here, a 5 16 Forster bit. Um, I miscalculated the radius here to the radius of the, of the drill bit. It's it's more of a radius here than it is here. So when I actually cut the holes, um, it didn't fit right. So I had to extend the holes out a little bit. And when I extended them out, as you can see, these little screw holes that hold it down, put that out there so you can see it, they're only ooh, a fat 16th from the end of this radius. So when I extended these things out about a 16th either way, I no longer had any meat to put the screws in. So I basically had holes that were no good anymore. So I realized that I didn't really need the radiuses at all. I could just put these things in to a square uh, groove right at the edge of the board, which is what I've recut here. And now I do have, um, as you can see, the ability to get my screws in to hold these things in. And they're fine with this exposed. It doesn't have to be buried in the wood. They're still going to stick. So what I've done, and unfortunately I did that off camera when I realized what I did. Um, I went down to the basement quick and cut this off with the table saw. And then just used a bandsaw and a jigsaw to quickly cut these little rectangles out. Um, <clears throat> I mean, perfectly honest, you know, with a jigsaw, it's pretty easy to just measure this width and cut. Uh, a square out like that. So that was pretty easy to do. So unfortunately I don't have that on film, but that's what I did. So now what we want to do is actually get, I want to use this side up, it's a little bit cleaner. Might as well make it look good before we start drilling holes in it, right? So what we want to do now is get this thing, get these magnets screwed down. So I have this fancy little Sharpie with a extended tip. Uh, I got this on Amazon a while ago. I don't know who the hell makes it. Uh, it's called the Long Nose Pattern Marker. But it's great for things like this. I'm going to make a mark. Make a mark. And as you can see, I got my four marks for my drill. Alright guys, I drilled a couple off camera. Uh, obviously, I made four ink marks. I drilled four pilot holes for these screws. These are very close to the ends. I mean, this is a bad design. They literally only give you uh, a slight little bit next to, uh, you, know, you know, you see what I'm saying here, the hole, and then you have almost nothing. So these holes have to be very, very close to the actual cutout for the magnet. Uh, don't consider that the greatest design in the world, and I'm expecting this one to fail when I put it in. I'm a little nervous, but... Let's see what happens. I am using a hand screwdriver for this. I do not want to uh, drive these home with a driver and uh, almost certainly, you know, shatter that little piece of wood that the screw is going to hold to. Um, I am kind of hoping that the fact that the magnet itself is filling this slot will, uh, as we say, uh, keep the integrity of the wood. But I don't like this design at all. I think we're going to have a failure here, and I don't know much of a way around it. Um, it's just the nature of how these things were made. So we'll, we'll use this jig and see if it's a failure later. Uh, for now... You know, the screws all went in and set. I didn't over-tighten any of them. Um, 
I definitely did not use a driver. I think a driver would have stripped at least one of these out. So let's add our fence. First things first. Fence is slightly too long. These little shark pull saws are awesome, guys, uh, for, for inexpensive money. This is an under $30 saw. It is the extra fine cut saw. The other one here is more the carpenter's version. This one is actually called general carpentry saw. Don't really recommend this one for woodworking. This thing hacks up 2x4s very well. This thing makes a nice cut. Now, I believe earlier in this uh, video I mentioned that this doesn't have to be perfectly square. This could be like this for all that matters because the drill bit itself is attached to the chuck, through the quill, everything to the motor. Spinning, it doesn't move. So the, the fence itself really doesn't care if it's like this, like this, anywhere. You know, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees to this table because this doesn't move. So I'm just going to flush it right to the magnets and call it good. Um, put a little glue on it and clamp it up. Okay, we'll let that dry and I'll show you how to use it. Alright guys, uh, apparently this is blooper reel for me, this video. Um, I made another mistake. Um, and um, maybe I'll title this video Fixing My Mistakes because that's what I've been doing out here. As you can see, I wanted to bring the fence back as far as I could uh, to give me as much space as I could for the table. Uh, I did not take into account that the knobs need to turn. I brought them back flush to the knob and forgot that I had to turn it. So as you can see, the knob won't turn right now. So a little adjustment, my little detail saw that I love. Um, we're going to just cut a notch out so the knob can turn. And it was just like I designed it that way. Um, you know, it looks a little funky, guys, but um, it allows the fence to be further back. It's not going to affect anything going up against the fence because there still is consistency across the bottom. So I, I'm actually kind of calling this a, uh, a lucky screw-up, if you want to call it that. Um, it's going to work. So let's put this thing on and show you how it works. There we have it. It is now rigidly attached. Um, let's get a scrap piece of wood. Okay, what do we do with this fence? So let's say we wanted to put a uh, a series of, well, I grabbed my, uh, my metric uh, drill bit. So let's say we wanted to put a series of six millimeter uh, holes one inch from the end of a board. How do we go about that? Well, we put the bit in. And then we take and get our fence loosened. We slide it till the actual brad point of the brad point bit is at the one inch and lock the magnets down. So now we're locked. Gotta lock our uh, table in place. So now we can easily. Check and see if that twisted. It did. Now, 
you can run. Probably should have a board wider than an inch. Now you can run a series of holes. At whatever spacing you want. And they all will line up exactly one inch from the end of the board. Um, now obviously if these were shelf pins, you would make your marks here so that you bring your brad point right down on the individual marks so that they're spaced correctly. But let's say you do want to space something from this side and this side. Let's say we want to be one inch in, but we want to be an inch and a half in from the end of the board. Well, how do we do that? Well, we take our square. I'm eyeballing this. I will have a center line here on this fence. So let's say we want to be, uh, what did I say, an inch and a half? Yeah, let's go with an inch and a half. An inch and a half from that mark is right here. We get any kind of piece of scrap block. Okay, so now I have a stop block at an inch and a half. I've still got my fence set at one inch. Bob's your uncle. So that hole is now one inch and a half in and one inch that way. And you can repeat that. That's the beauty of it. It's repeatable. If I needed 10 of these with a hole right there, I could do 10 of them and I would get the exact same hole. That's what this fence is for. There's no reason I can't do shelf pins on a shelf or on, the si on the side of a cabinet with this setup on this little drill press. Um, the magnets hold. You can see it's wobbling a little bit, but that's, the, that's actually the drill press moving. It's not the table. The table's secure. I'm, I'm, move, I'm trying to move it. It's not moving. I gotta actually throw the switches and then I can easily take it off and that is the beauty of the magnets. It's easy to remove when you don't need it, you know, and on a t drill press this small, there are going to be times when I don't need it because I need this extra space. So I think these magic magnets are an excellent little jig tool. What else can you do with them? You can make feather boards. Um, for your table saw, for your band saw. You, you literally could make uh, resaw jigs. You could literally just take one of these raw, put it on your table saw, and use it as a stop where you bring your board to it and then run it through with your miter, miter gauge. There's plenty of things to do with this. Okay, guys, uh, I hope this worked for you. I left some of my mistakes in here because I think it's neat to see from mistakes that I make. Uh, if you can learn from them, um, everybody makes mistakes. Most YouTubers cut them out. Um, I choose to leave some in. Trust me, I cut some out. Don't get me wrong. Um, these were minor mistakes. And as you can see, the, the, the notches that I had to cut out for these switches don't affect it at all. So I actually think that was kind of a, a win. Um, uh, I, I'll be honest, I shouldn't have used pine here. You can see I chipped it. Um, probably another piece of plywood or a piece of hardwood would be better for the fence. But like I said, this is a disposable tool. I did not even put a little insert in here. Somebody might say, hey, John, why didn't you put an insert? What do we mean by an insert? When I have it here, you know, we are. this is very capable of drilling right through and hitting the table. Some guys put little uh, inserts in here that they can remove so that it lasts forever. I don't expect this thing to last forever. I don't need an insert as it gets holes in it. It gets holes in it, it wears out, and I build a new one. Um, so that is a design decision I made. Um, you may choose to put an insert in there if that's how you want to roll. That, that's perfectly fine and, and, a, and, a good, and a good idea. I just choose not to. I just think, you know, it's a drill press table made to get holes cut in it, and that's that. Have a good day, guys. If you like this, please hit the like and subscribe button. As I've said a few times now, liking and subscribing is probably the best thing you can do to help me with this channel. So I'd appreciate it if you could do that. Have a good day. We'll see you in the next one.